uh, in our previous lectures we have discussed about the metals in this lecture we are going to discuss about the ceramics so uh, this is the same materials classification chart which i have already shown in the metal part so now in this particular case we are going to discuss about the ceramics materials so before going to start just let us know about the definitions of the ceramics the term ceramics comes from the greek word keramikos which means the burnt stuff or drinking vessel ceramic materials are inorganic in nature non metallic materials and things made from them most ceramics are compounds between metallic and non metallic elements for which the interatomic bonds are either totally ionic bond or predominantly ionic but having same covalent character they may be crystalline or maybe a partially crystalline they are formed by the action of heat and subsequent cooling so right hand side you can see some kind of ceramic materials generally we are using the silicon carbide for the cutting disc carbon ceramics for the disc brakes nowadays we are using the disc brakes for all the vehicles and some spherical hanging arrangements from some aesthetics or maybe the aesthetic views or maybe some kind of home products now we are going to discuss about the history of the ceramics it is it has been started very long back in 26000 bc early man discovers that clay consisting of mammoth fat and bone mixed with bone ash and local losses can be molded and dried in sun to form brittle and heat resistant materials so that you can understand that from when the ceramics materials means working on the ceramics materials has been started now it has come to 4000 bc glass is discovered in ancient egypt this glass consisted of a silicate glaze over a sintered quartz body it has initially used in jewelry purpose then from 50 bc to 50 ad production of optical glasses lenses and mirrors window glasses begins in rome italy in 1960 discovery of 50 ad then it will come to 600 ad porcelain first ceramic composite is created by the chinese this material is made by firing clay along with feldspar and quartz then we are moving to mid 1800s thomas edition has tried various types of ceramics for resistivity towards his newly discovered carbon microphone discovery of porcelain electrical insulations and incandescent light bulb in 1960 discovery of fiber optic cable which allows laser light pulse to carry large amount of information with extremely low energy loss then we are moving to 1965 the development of photovoltaic cells which convert light into electricity opens a new way to access the solar energy in 1987 discovery of semiconducting ceramic oxide with a critical temperature of 72 kelvin a potential application of ceramic superconductor is in integrated circuit in new high speed computers in 1992 certain ceramics known as smart materials are published these materials can sense and react to variable surface conditions much like a living organism and till today whatever the ceramics has been discovered for advanced applications everything will cover in this particular lecture now classification of the ceramics so generally it is two types one is known as the traditional ceramics another one is known as the advanced ceramics advanced ceramics also has been divided into two sub categories one is called the electro ceramics another one is called the advanced structural ceramics so first we will discuss about the traditional ceramic materials so traditional ceramics are made from natural raw materials which generally we are getting from the environment of clay or maybe clay silicates it contains categories of pottery like earthenware stoneware and the porcelain the compositions of the clays used type of additives and firing temperatures determine the nature of the end product generally applications building materials like as we know that bricks we are using for making the buildings clay pipe glass household goods like pottery cooking ware manufacturing like abrasive materials electrical devices fibers etc so right hand side you can find the traditional ceramics generally the white wares clay refractories glasses cements and the abrasives 
now we will discuss about the white wares. White wares are ceramic products that are white to off white in appearances. It has different properties which includes imperviousness of two fluids, low conductivity of electricity, chemical inertness and an ability to be formed into complex shapes. They are differentiated according to their degree of vitrifications. What is the meaning of vitrifications? Transformation of a substance into glass and the resulting porosity. So, the properties generally porous, semi vitreous, vitreous and the non vitreous. So, when you are talking about the whiteware products, you can find generally you are using it for the fine china dinnerware, crockery set, floor and wall tiles, sanitary ware, dental implants, electrical porcelain and the decorative ceramics. So, bottom you can find that some kind of uh, ceramics or maybe the whiteware products generally we are using in our day to day life. Now, we will discuss about the clay. So, clay is a finely grain natural rock or soil material that combines one or more clay minerals with traces of metal oxides and the organic matter. They are plastic due to their water content and become hard, brittle and non-plastic upon drying. Depending on the soils content in which it is found, clay can appear in various colors from white to dull gray or brown to deep orange red. Main groups of clays are kaolinite, montmorillonite, smectite, elite and chloride. Now, we are going to discuss about the refractory. So, generally the brick or maybe any kind of uh, high temperature materials generally we are making it from the ceramics. So, refractory ceramics are insulating materials designed to withstand high stresses and the temperature. They are produced from natural and synthetic materials usually non-metallic or combinations of compounds and minerals such as alumina, fire clays, bauxite, chromite, dolomite, magnetite etcetera. They have high content of silicon or aluminum oxide. Now, we are going to discuss about the amorphous ceramics or the glasses. The main ingredient in amorphous glasses is called the silica SiO2. When it is cooled very slowly, it will form crystalline structure. If cooled more quickly, it will form amorphous structure consisting of disordered and linked chains of silicon and the oxygen atoms. It can be tempered to increase its toughness and resistance to cracking. It depends upon your, your applications. So, generally for the car windshield, we are using the tempered glasses or maybe some uh, glasses where we are using for the high temperature applications, we are using the tempered glasses. So, it varies from application to application. There are different types of glasses, generally soda lime glasses, it includes 95 percent of all glass. So, this is the pictorial view of soda lime glass. Then lead glass, it contains lead oxide to improve the refractive index, borosilicate, it contains the boron oxide known as the pyrex, generally if all our chemical uh, petri dish or maybe the pipette or burette, generally we are making it from the borosilicate. Next we are discussing about the flat glasses, generally we are using for the windows for our household purposes, container glasses, bottles, then pressed and blown glasses, generally dinnerware and the glass fibers for the home insulations for generally for the high temperature resistance we are using this kind of glass wools or maybe the glass fibers. Now, we are going to discuss about the abrasives. Abrasives are very hard substances used for grinding, shaping or polishing the other materials. Generally, the ab, um, emery paper or maybe for any kind of polishing or maybe the lapping or for the hunting methods, generally we are using this kind of abrasive materials. They are also able to cut materials which are too hard for other tools and give better finishes and hold the closer tolerance. So, generally we are using this kind of abrasive particles to give the final shape of any products. Common abrasives include silicon carbide, tungsten carbide, aluminum oxide and the silica sand. It has different properties such as high melting point, chemically inert and high abrasive power. Now, we are going to discuss about the cements, it is also one kind of ceramics. Cement is a binder used for construction that sets, hardens and adheres to other materials binding them together. Generally for the building operations or maybe the structural applications we are using these cements. It is made by grinding together a mixture of limestone and clay which is then heated at a temperature of 1450 degree centigrade. It has adhesives and cohesive properties. 
So, common application of cements generally as I already told we are using it for the buildings like floor, beams, roofing, piles and bricks, transport for making the roads, pathways, bridges, parking, water generally for the pipes, drains, dams, tanks and pools, civil works like docks, retaining walls, warehousing. It is a very limited number of applications, but cement is having a very versatile applications. Now we are going to discuss about the advanced ceramic materials. These materials have been developed over the past half century because these all are the generally the research based or maybe the application based ceramic materials. A type of ceramic exhibiting a high degree of industrial efficiency. These ceramics often have simple chemical compositions, but they are difficult to manufacture. So, these classifications of the advanced ceramics based on chemical compositions, first it will come the nitride ceramics, generally the silicon nitride or maybe the aluminum nitride, silicate ceramics like porcelain, magnesium silicate, mullite, etc. Carbide ceramics like silicon carbide, boron carbide, tungsten carbide, generally these kind of carbides we are using for cutting tool materials. Oxide ceramics like aluminum oxide, aluminum titanate, magnesium oxide, sometimes we are using this kind of materials for enhancing the strength of that particular materials also. Classification of advanced ceramics based on applications, so generally we are dividing into two parts, one is known as the electro ceramics, another is known as the advanced structural ceramics. When you are talking about the electro ceramics, first it will come the coating ceramics, then conducting ceramics, magnetic ceramics and the optical ceramics. And when we are talking about the advanced structural ceramics, first we will come the nuclear ceramics, bio ceramics, tribological ceramics and the automotive ceramics. Actually it is totally depends upon the applications. If you are going to use it for some biotechnology side or maybe for wear and abrasions or maybe some automobile parts, based on their you are giving the nomenclature for different types of ceramics. What is the use of advanced ceramics? Advanced ceramics plays a vital role in increasing the safety, cost effectiveness and comfort in vehicle and automotive engineering. As I told already as per our requirement, as per our own desire, we are making this kind of ceramics as per our own requirement. Ceramic substrates, circuit carriers, core materials and many other components are in use throughout the electronics industries. Nowadays, we are using these ceramics in a versatile manner for the electronics applications. Ceramic materials enable safe, low wear process control, reduce emissions and ensure efficient use of resource in many areas of energy supply and the environmental technology. These applications is also very, very limited. Ceramics nowadays we are using for a means it is a from our day to day life it is fully join with us. Now we will discuss about the preparations of advanced and the traditional ceramics. So first raw material preparations for the traditional ceramics generally we are using the raw material as a clay and silica. When you are talking about the advanced ceramics we are using the powders generally prepared by the chemical precipitation methods, spray drying, freeze drying, vapor phase or maybe by the sol gel method. When you are talking about the forming process, generally for the traditional ceramics we are using the potter's wheel, slip casting, pressing and for the advanced ceramics we are using the slip casting, injection molding, sol gel method, hot pressing. When you are talking about the high temperature processing, generally for the traditional ceramics we are using the flame kin. But when we are talking about the advanced ceramics, generally we are using the electric furnace, hot press, reaction sintering, plasma spraying and microwave furnace. Finishing products, generally for the traditional ceramics we are doing by it erosions or maybe the glazing methods. Advanced ceramics we are using the erosions, laser machining, plasma spraying, iron implantation which is the latest technology or maybe the coating technology. When you are doing the characterizations for the traditional ceramics, we are using the visible examinations or maybe simple the light microscopy. For advanced ceramics, we are using for light microscopy, XRD, electron microscopy, scanning probe microscopy, neutron diffraction, surface analytical methods. So from this particular table, you can easily understand that for advanced ceramics, we are using all kind of advanced technology to characterize or maybe to prepare this kind of ceramic 
materials. Now we are going to discuss about the properties of ceramics. So, generally as we know the properties of ceramics has been divided into two parts, one is called the physical properties, another one is known as the chemical properties. So, when we are talking about the physical properties, generally the density, porosity, mechanical properties, thermal properties, magnetic properties and electrical properties, these all sub properties is coming under the physical properties and rest one is known as the chemical properties. What is physical properties? First physical properties is coming to our mind is known as the density. Most of ceramics are lighter, generally 20 to 70 percent of density of the steel than metals, but heavier than the polymers ranging from 2 to 6 gram per centimeter cube. So, this is the general uh, basic density ranging of the ceramics, but maybe some advanced ceramics is having more than that or maybe that less than that of this particular value. As the strength of ceramics increased, the density become heavy and vice versa. For example, diamond has more strength due to the high density, whereas foam has less strength due to its less density. So, from this particular image, you can find that if the density of the foam is lighter, so automatically its strength is also less. But when we are talking about the diamond, so diamond the density is also too high and due to that its strength is also too high. So, now calculations of the ceramic density, generally it is denoted by the rho is equal to n prime, then summation over A c plus summation over A a by V c and N a. So, where n prime is number of formula units within the unit cell, summation over A c and summation over A a are the sum of the atomic weight of all cations and anions in the formula unit. V c is the unit cell volume. N A is the Avogadro number, generally it is 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 formula units per mole. And if we are going to calculate the percentage theoretical density, so generally it is measured density by theoretical density into 100. Now we are going to discuss about the porosity of the ceramics. Porosity or void fractions is a measure of the void or empty spaces in a material. It is a fraction of volume of voids over the total volume. So, generally ceramic materials has have no open porosity. Porosity size from nanometer to micrometer can be generated through the appropriate selection of raw materials, the manufacturing process and the use of the additives. Actually that is totally controllable. It has been observed for some ceramic materials that the magnitude of the modulus of elasticity E and flexural strength sigma f s decrease with increase in volume fraction porosity p. So, generally E is equal to E 0 into 1 minus 1.9 p plus 0 0.9 p square. Sigma f s is equal to sigma 0 exponential to the power minus n p, where E 0 is the modulus of elasticity of the non-porous materials and sigma 0 and n are the experimental constants. So, from this right hand side uh, graph you can easily find out that when the modulus of elasticity is going to be decreased, so automatically the volume fraction porosity is going to be increased. And same thing is happening for the flexural strength also. The flexural strength is also going to be decreased and the volume fraction of porosity is going to be increased. That means the influence of porosity on the modulus of elasticity and flexural strength for aluminum oxide at room temperature we have given the examples of this by these two graph. Now, we are going to discuss about the mechanical properties of ceramics. So, first stress strain behavior of the ceramics. The stress strain behavior of brittle ceramics is not usually determined by a tensile test because difficult to prepare and test specimens having required geometry, difficult to grip brittle materials without fracturing because when you are going to give the press by the clip itself the material will break. And then third one is that ceramics fell after only about 0.1 percent of strain. So, that is why generally we are not going to do any kind of tensile testing for ceramic materials. Therefore, the stress at fracture is determined by using the flexure states is known as the flexural strength, which we are thinking that is equivalent to the tensile strength of that particular ceramic material. So, how we are going to calculate? 
So, calculation of stress strain behavior using three point loading methods we have shown into this particular image. So, in this particular image you can find for rectangular sections the thickness of that materials is D and the width is B and if it is the circular one the radius of that particular material is known as the R capital R. So, now how we are going to calculate for so for possible cross section we are calculating when we are calculating the m. What is m? m is nothing but the maximum bending moment. So, when we are calculating the maximum bending moment for the rectangular material it is known as the F L by 4 and for the circular also it is known as the F L by 4. When we are going to calculate the distance from center of specimen to outer fibers. So, generally for the rectangular materials it is d by 2 and for the circular one it is only the capital R. And when you are talking about the moment of inertia of cross sections capital I which is nothing but the small b small d cube by 12 for the rectangular one pi and for circular one pi capital R to the power 4 by 4. Now, we are going to measure the flexural strength. What is the formula of that flexural strength sigma f s? It is nothing but the m c by i. So, sigma f s for the rectangular material is 3 f l by 2 b d square and for the circular capital F l by pi capital R cube. So, by using this formula you can easily calculate the flexural strength of any ceramic materials. Now, we are going to discuss about the elastic behavior of ceramic materials. Generally elastic stress strain behavior for ceramic materials using flexural test is similar to the tensile test results for the metals which I have already told. Elastic modulus slope of ceramics is usually higher than for metals because ceramics are bonded either covalently or ionically and always it is much higher than the metallic bonds of any metals. Range of elastic modulus for ceramic is about 70 to 500 giga Pascal. So, from this particular curve you can understand that the diamond generally it is coming around 900 GPA, but for alumina oxide it is lesser and for silicon dioxide it is more lesser. Strength of ceramics, ceramics have compressive strengths about 10 times higher than their tensile strength. The tensile strength of ceramics is low because the existing flaws giving the stress concentrations of that particular materials. Ceramics are usually used in applications where load are compressive in nature. It depends on the material compositions, production conditions, manufacturing process, grain size of initial materials and their additives. So, this is the common graphs generally we are showing that strength of the ceramics is automatically more less than the metals. Now, we are going to discuss about the plastic deformations of ceramics. So, first we have to know that what is the mechanism of the plastic deformations. So, for crystalline ceramics plastic deformation occurs as with metals by the motion of dislocations. Hardness and brittleness of these materials are due to the difficulty of slip for covalent bonding because covalent bonding or maybe the ionic bonding is very very strong bonding. So, at slip is not possible in this particular case. In ceramics covalent bonds are stronger that is why the ceramics are brittle in nature. Lack of plasticity due to ionic and covalent bonding direction which is in direction and in nature. But when you are talking about the for the non crystalline ceramics plastic deformation does not occur by dislocation motion for non crystalline ceramics because there is no regular atomic structure. Materials deformed by viscous flow that is by breaking and reforming of atomic bonds allowing ions and atoms to slide past each other like in liquid. So, the slipping mechanism is taking place. So, in this particular case here the F you can see the F is known as the shear force, A is the area and V is the velocity and Y is the distance in between. So, in this case particular case viscosity of the non crystalline ceramic eta is equal to F by A by dV by dy, where F by A is the applied load per unit area or which is known as the shear stress or maybe the tau and dV by dy is the change in velocity with distance in a direction perpendicular to the 
plate itself. Now we are going to discuss about the brittle fracture of ceramics. So, at room temperature both crystalline and non-crystalline ceramics shows fracture before any plastic deformation in response to an applied tensile load. Brittle fracture processes consist of the formation and propagation of cracks through the cross section of material in direction perpendicular to the applied load. This is the very very important parameters. So, the generally the crack formation is taking place for the ceramic materials. Crack growth in crystalline ceramics may be either transgranular through the grains or may be the intergranular along grain boundaries. So, in this particular this is simple the stress strain curve and this is the elastic limit and you can get the brittle fracture in this particular point for a ceramic. So, what is the mechanism of brittle fracture in a ceramics? There are four stages of fracture ceramics because uh, if I give an example of an breaking of a glass, you can better understand that how the fracture is taking place in for the ceramics materials. So, source of failure first one, second is the initial region mirror is very very flat and smooth as we already know. Next is called the mist region and last one is called the hackel region. So, now I will tell you one by one. So, suppose this is your glass. So, this is the your source of failure and then there is some initial uh, area or maybe the initial region. So, generally the initial region is this zone actually. Ne next is called the mist region. So, this zone is the called that all the dotted side is called the mist zone. It is faint annular region just outside the mirror and has an even rougher texture. Now, next hackel region, it is a set of lines, you can find that there is a cracks lines generally we are calling it that radiate away from the crack source in the direction of crack propagations. So, fracture states sigma f increases with decrease in the mirror radius decreases r subscript m. So, right hand side is the real image of cracking of any mirror. So, this is known as the origin, then this is known as the mirror region and then this zone is known as the mist region and then last one is known as the hackle region. So, what do you mean by fractography? It is normally a part of such an analysis which involves examining the path of a crack propagations as well as microscopic features of the fracture surface. So, here you can see this is the origin and then after that the crack is propagating into different directions. So, this is crack is propagating into the different directions. Here the bending the crack originating is taking place and then crack is propagating into these all directions. For the torsions and internal pressure say suppose you are having any glass bottles or maybe some ceramic material bottle and internally you are giving a high pressure. So, how the crack propagation is taking place in this particular ceramic materials. Now, we are going to discuss about the hardness. So, one beneficial mechanical property of ceramics is their hardness which is often utilized when an abrasive or grinding action is required. Yes, because when we are going to grind any material, so we are going to choose that abrasive particles which is more harder than the workpiece material. So, ceramics materials are considered as the hardest material. So, for ceramics hardness is defined at the resistance to elastic deformations of the surface. Hardness is affected from porosity in the surface, the grain size of the microstructure and the effects of grain boundary phases. The high hardness of technical ceramics results in favorable wear resistance. Ceramics are thus good for tribological applications means for uh, any kind of friction or maybe the wear mechanisms. Test procedures of determining the hardness of ceramic materials according to Noop, Vickers, Rockwell as all shown in this particular table. So, if you see that material class here left hand side all are the different types of ceramic materials and we are going to give the example of the Vicar hardness of those in the giga pascal. So, for glasses it is 5 to 10, for zirconia aluminum nitrides it is 10 to 14, for alumina silicon nitrides it is 15 to 20, 
silicon carbides and boron carbides is generally 20 to 30 cubic boron nitrides which is also one kind of hardest material which we are pre synthesizing in our laboratory it is known as 40 to 50 gigapascals and for diamond it is 60 to 70 or more than that. Now we are going to discuss about the toughness of ceramic materials. So, both ceramics and glasses at room temperature will undergo the first fracture in a tensile strength before any plastic deformations has occurred. They have a fracture toughness about 50 times lesser than the metals even though their bonding forces are higher yes because as I already told they are possessing the covalent or maybe the ionic bonding which is much harder than the metallic bonding using hot pressing reaction bonding to improve toughness. So, this is the simple stress strain curve and we have already gone through these graphs into the metal parts. So, this is simply giving you the toughness of that particular ceramic material. Now, we are going to discuss about the thermal properties of ceramics. So, first it comes in our mind is known as the thermal conductivity. It is the property of a material that indicates its ability to conduct the heat so that it heat can easily flow from one point to another point. Ceramic have low thermal conductivity due to ionic covalent bonding which does not have free electron opposite to metals means metals is having more free electrons than the ceramics that is why the thermal conductivity of metals is much higher than the ceramic materials. Ceramic materials are used for thermal insulations due to their low thermal conductivity except silicon carbide, aluminum nitride these all are the exceptional ceramic materials. What are the applications? Aluminum nitride is used in IC packages. So, generally for the uh, electronic purposes for semiconductors that emit high volume of heat. Zirconia blocks heat effectively and its coefficient of thermal conductivity is low. It is used for kiln walls which are exposed to high temperature. Generally, we are using this zirconia uh, blocks for the uh, furnace or maybe oven or maybe the high temperature applications. So, in this particular case, you can find the thermal conductivity of different materials. When you are talking about the fine ceramics, zirconia is only 3, but whereas aluminum nitride is 150, same thing you can find for the metals like cemented carbide, it is tungsten carbide with cobalt, it is having 85 and carbon steels it is has uh, SC is 41 and alumina and silicon carbide and silicon nitride they are much lesser than the metals one. So, high thermal conductivity like aluminum nitrides. So, if you give the temperature, the temperature will go from one point to another point that means the temperature will be homogeneously dispersed throughout the material. But when you are talking about the zirconia from the color itself, when you are giving a temperature at a particular point, the temperature is not flowing smoothly to whole material. Now, we are going to discuss about the thermal expansion coefficient. The coefficient ratio of thermal expansion indicates how much a material expands per unit rise in temperature. Say suppose we are going to rise a degree of temperature, so how much the material will elongate. The coefficient of thermal expansion depends also on the bond strength between the atoms that make up the material. Thermal expansion of ceramic materials is generally lower than that of metals applications. Parts for high precision measuring equipments generally you are using this kind of materials. What are the reasons? Strong bonding, fine ceramics like diamond, silicon carbide, silicon nitride and alumina have low thermal expansion coefficient. Weak bonding like stainless steel have higher thermal expansion in comparison. So, here from this particular graph also or maybe the data table you can find the value. Say suppose for silicon nitride it is 2.6, but when we are talking about the zirconia oxide it is about 10.5, but it is for stainless steel it is 18, 18 into 10 to the power minus 6 per degree centigrade and it is for cemented carbide it is generally 5.5. So, for fine ceramics you can see that a very negligible amount of expansion has been taken place due to the temperature 
and that is thus its value is only 7.1 into 10 to the power minus 6 per degree centigrade for alumina. But simultaneously when we are talking about the metals you can find for stainless steel it is 18.6 into 10 to the power minus 6 per degree centigrade. So, the thermal expansion here is much higher than the alumina itself. When we are talking about the specific heat capacity, heat capacity is amount of heat required to raise the material temperature by 1 unit. Specific heat capacity of ceramic materials is higher than that of metals. Now we are going to discuss about the thermal shock resistance. Thermal shock refers to the ability of material to withstand the sharp changes in temperature. That means, if you are going to change the temperature, the material shape and size is not going to change so rapidly. So, like example, silicon nitride, a particularly heat tolerant material, displays superior resistance to thermal shock. When we are raising the temperature of that silicon nitride up to 550 degree centigrade and suddenly we are dipping that materials into the water, no material shape has been changed or maybe the material uh, properties is not going to be changed. Some ceramic materials have very low coefficient of thermal expansion, therefore their resistance to thermal shock is very high despite of low ductility such as fused silica. So, there is a certain formula to measure the thermal shock resistance which is denoted by the capital R subscript S is equal to lambda into sigma F s by small a into capital E. Whereas, capital R subscript S is known as the thermal shock resistance, lambda is the thermal conductivity of that particular materials, sigma F s is the flexural strength, small a is the coefficient of the thermal expansion and E is the modulus of elasticity. Now, we are going to discuss about the electrical properties of ceramics. So, first electrical conductivity. So, electrical conductivity is the ability of material to conduct the electric current. Most of ceramic materials are dielectric in nature. What is dielectric? The materials having very low electrical conductivity, but supporting the electrostatic field. Electrical conductivity of ceramics varies with the frequency of field applied and also with temperature. Thus is due to the fact that charge transport mechanisms are frequency dependent that is the important one. Ceramics have very low electrical conductivity due to ionic covalent bonding which does not form the free electrons. So, that is why the electrical conductivity for metals is more higher than the ceramics. Here we are going to give an example a, of a thermistor. So, thermistor it is an electronic component utilizing a property in which the electrical resistance decreases as temperature increases. Actually, here we are going to give the temperature. As the temperature is increasing, so the resistance of this particular ceramic material is going to be decreased. That is why the flow of electricity is more and that is why the light is glowing. So, that is a, a one kind of examples of the electrical conductivity of uh, ceramic material. There is one another interesting parameters which is known as superconductivity of ceramics. So, superconductors can transport electric current without any resistance and thus without any loses whatsoever. Despite a very low electrical conductivity of most of the ceramic materials, there are ceramics possessing the superconductivity properties near to zero electric resistivity. An example, lanthanum, yttrium, barium, copper oxide ceramic may be superconducting at temperature as high as 138 Kelvin. This critical temperature is much higher than superconductivity critical temperature of some other superconductors up to 30 Kelvin only. Piezoelectric property, piezoelectric property of ceramic can be defined by piezoelectric effect. Piezoelectric effect can be defined as generating the piezoelectric effect by some mechanical strength. Here the basic thing I am telling you, generally the piezoelectric property is nothing, there is certain kind of materials. So, if you hit that materials, generally they are going to generate the electricity and it is vice versa also. And if you give some kind of electricity to them, they are going to give some kind of mechanical vibrations, contracting or maybe the expanding actions of that particular materials. So, first one is the generating piezoelectric effect means mechanical strengths applied between two surfaces of a solid dielectric part generates the voltage between the surfaces. 
motor piezoelectric effect voltage applied between two surface of a solid dielectric part result in contracting or expanding of the part. Some ceramics lead zirconate titanate, barium titanate, bismuth titanate, lead magnesium niobate have piezoelectric properties. So, what are the applications? Piezoelectric ceramics are used for manufacturing various transducers, actuators and sensors like hydrophones, sonar, strain gauges, medical ultrasound equipment. So, we are using this kind of piezoelectric material. Now, we are going to discuss about the dielectric property of ceramics. So, dielectric ceramics and substrates are electrical insulators with dielectric strength and dielectric constant. In capacitor applications, ceramics with high dielectric constants are used to increase the charge that can be stored. In high voltage insulator applications, high electrical resistivity, ohm meter and high dielectric strength kilo volt per meter is required. What do you mean by dielectric strength? It is the ability of a material to prevent electrical conductivity at high voltage. What is dielectric strength? Dielectric strength is defined as the maximum voltage required to produce a dielectric breakdown through the material and is expressed as volts per unit thickness. So, dielectric strength dS is equal to dV by dx max is equal to breakdown voltage into Vb by thickness d. The higher the dielectric strength of a material, the better its quality as an insulator. The type of ceramic used as an insulator because it does not have any loose electrons and dielectric strength of ceramic is high as compared to metals. So, it is a good insulating material. Now, we are going to discuss about the magnetic properties of ceramics. Magnetic ceramics are prepared by sintering technology from iron oxide and barium strontium carbonate with small amounts of other metal oxides. These are called the ferrites. There are two types of magnetic ceramics. First one is known as the isotropic ceramics and second one is known as the anisotropic ceramics. So, what is isotropic ceramics? It is defined as the magnet with equal magnetic properties in all directions. And what is anisotropic ceramic? It is defined as the magnet with magnetic properties in the direction of pressing. Ferrite combines good magnetic properties means high magnetizations with very low electrical conductivity. Low conductivity of ferrites allows reducing energy loss caused by eddy currents induced in the material when it works in high frequency magnetic fields. What are the applications of ferrites? Magnetic ceramics, ferrite antennas, speaker magnets, magnetic resonance imaging for the biomedical applications generally we are doing it for our bone cracks uh, or maybe some other things MRI audio visual recording heads. Now, we are going to discuss about the chemical properties of ceramics. So, ceramics are generally have good chemical resistance to weak acids and weak base. However, very strong acids or strong bases tends to produce ion exchange reactions and dissolve the structures. For example, HF is commonly used to intentionally each ceramic surfaces composed of silicates F minus ion that causes the actual damage to that ceramic materials. These are soluble in certain strong acids and strong bases usually non-crystalline glassy phases dissolves fast and capable of selective ion leaching and ion exchange reactions. So, here in this particular figure you can see the high ion exchange reactions. So, first the preferential dissolutions of the non-crystalline phases first and then it is going into the crystalline phases over there. So, generally the ceramic materials being inherently corrosion resistance are frequently utilized at elevated temperatures and in extremely corrosive environments. What are the advantages of ceramics? First, it is harder than the conventional structure metals, low coefficient of friction, extremely high melting point, corrosion resistance, low density, extreme hardness, inexpensive, easily available, glaze ceramics does not stain. Of course, there is certain disadvantages also. First is called the dimensional tolerances difficult to control during processing, weak in tension, poor shock resistance can crack when heat 
with heavy items because they are very brittle in nature. What are the characteristics of ceramics? First one it is the low density, high melting point, high hardness, high elastic modulus, low toughness, high electrical resistivity, low thermal conductivity, high temperature wear resistance, high thermal shock resistance and the high corrosion resistance. Now, we are going to discuss about the application of various ceramics. So, say let us take the aluminum oxide which is also known as alumina. Generally application is chromium doped alumina is used for making the lasers. When you are talking about the aluminum nitride used in many electronic applications such as in electrical circuits operating at high frequency. When you are talking about the diamond used in industrial abrasives, cutting tools, abrasion resistant coatings etcetera. When you are talking about the lead zirconium titanate widely used for the piezoelectric material. When you are talking about the silicon carbide used as coating on other material for protection from extreme temperature because it can withstand the high temperature. Titanium boride great toughness property and hence found application in armor productions generally for the defense applications we are using these materials. Zirconia used in making oxygen gas sensors as additive in many electronic ceramics. So, now we have come to the at the last slide of this particular lecture. So, now we have to conclude this particular lecture. So, just I will tell you that the summary of this particular lecture. So, first ceramic materials have covalent and ionic bonding and they do not have any free electrons over there. There are basically two types of ceramics one is called the traditional ceramics and another one is called the advanced ceramics. At room temperature mechanical response in is elastic, but fracture is brittle with negligible deformations due to desirable characteristics such as high hardness, wear resistance, chemical stability and high temperature strength ceramics become selected as preferred material for many many applications. So, this lecture will introduce you about the advanced ceramic materials various ceramic properties and their applications, but whatever the examples I have uh, given to you here is the very limited one. These ceramic materials is widely used for several applications in our day to day life and also for some advanced applications. Thank you.